Welcome back to Kelvin's Coin TV, everybody. My name is Ross, and we're continuing our playthrough of Pool of Radiance. And next up, we're going to stop the nomads from joining the enemy. To get there, we have to get to the wilderness. Quickest way there is to take the passenger dock, which is where we are right now, um, and take a boat to the east. Harbor Master tells you boats leave for the west, the east, Sokol Keep, and the north side of the bay. Round trip passage is one platinum piece. What passage can I sell you? We want to go east. Um, helper will pay. Catch the boat at the end of the pier. You board a boat. There's a boat docked here that will return to the civilized section of Flan. Will you take it? Uh, we're going to stay. All right, so now we're in the wilderness. We can get attacked out here by pretty much anything in the game. And we probably will. So we're just going to save it. If you followed this river, you would find the Cobalt Caves. We're going to do those before we do the uh, graveyard because it's probably the most difficult quest in the entire game. But a little bit to the west of that are the nomads. So we're going to follow the river for a little bit. You're surprised by a group of kobolds. I don't really want to fight them. Abusive. You convince the kobolds that discretion is the better part of valor, I guess. You're surprised. You are surprised by a group of kobolds. We'll parlay. Abusive. Fall for sparkling personalities. All right, so it's right at the edge of the forest here. Find a recently abandoned camp. There we go. You have stumbled upon a large nomad camp. Will you enter it? Enter. We found the nomad camp. Crowd of scruffy looking nomads approach you, I guess. Okay, great. <laughs> you can see children peering out of the tent openings only to be pushed back inside by their mothers. The nomads wait for you to make the first move. Parlay. The biggest, meanest, dirtiest nomad pushes his way to the front of the crowd. Five other nomads stand around him as if to protect him. The biggest nomad, apparently, the chief or headman, acknowledges you with a nod. We will give a feast in your honor tonight. Will you join us? Okay, sure. Come, let there be games for our guests who lead you to the camp's central clearing. You're treated as honored guests for the rest of the day. There are contests of strength and skill in your honor. As night falls, the nomads build a huge campfire in the center of the camp. The whole tribe gathers for the feast. After the feast, there is dancing and wild celebrations. During the festivities, the chief, his tongue loosened by drink, tells you of the dangers of the region. You make Hassad Aval's uh, talk entry 55 in your journal, which I will read for you now. Delivered as you sit around the campfire. You must be aware of the many dangers in this region. Several days walk to the west, there is a pyramid of evil that has been long avoided by all sensible men. To the southeast is a lair of many ferocious hobgoblins. The areas to the southwest are inhabited by evil men, buccaneers, marauders, and soldiers of an evil empire far to the west. And all good folks avoid the swamps to the east. Nothing but danger grows in the swamps. The headman seems very uneasy as he continues to speak. He practically begs you to stay for a few more days rather than leave in the morning as you planned. My scouts have seen evidence of a large band of kobolds in the vicinity. I worry about my people. If you would stay until they pass, I would appreciate it. Please think about it overnight. After a while, the festivities end and you are escorted to your lodging. Here you may rest. I'm going to save the game. So we shall. So... We're going to stay, because pretty soon the uh, kobolds will attack, and then we're just going to help them defend the village. They come in three waves. You just have to fight off three waves of uh, kobolds, and the quest is over, which is pretty easy. Headman comes to you and says, about my request of last night, what is your decision? Stay and fight or leave? We're going to stay and fight. I and my people thank you, and know that we have honor. You shall be richly rewarded for your generous aid. You may wander as you will, or you may stay here and rest and study. Forgive me, I must see to my people. He leaves. We're gonna rest it up. Sound of war cries draws you out of the hut. You spin to face the sound. Horde of kobolds is attacking the camp. A lone sentry charges, but is quickly cut down. The family emerges from a hut and charges the kobolds. A battle begins. Oh, we get to go first. How lovely. So a couple things since the last episode. We leveled up a few times and we get to cast Fireball now. Uh, the Juice can cast Fireball. We're actually going to save it, I think, maybe for the last wave. Right now we're just going to run and uh, we're going to find him. 
So here are all the cobalts. There's a oh, there's a decent amount of them. Especially to the south, but nothing you shouldn't be able to handle at this point. Oh, wait, why? Come on, game. Yeah. Similarly, oh uh, yeah. How could you miss? Yeah, we got a bunch of NPCs with us as well. If you wanted to, you could cast a bunch of sleep spells that work really effectively against Kobolds. You know, at this stage, you're like a level four, maybe even five magic user, uh, which means your sleep spells would probably take out all nine um, Kobolds in the square around which you center the point of casting. I think in all editions of D&D, I, I don't remember it working any differently in second edition as it does in fifth. It does it by hit points. So you have a pool of hit points to distribute amongst creatures you want to put to sleep. And kobolds only have three hit points, so you can put a lot of them to sleep at higher levels. Really power powerful about sleep is that there's no saving throw. It just happens. It's kind of, just kind of unfair. So you get it. We have a bunch of NPCs. A lot of the nomads will be with us. They shoot arrows. The kobolds of them are shooting a lot of arrows. For the sake of time, I won't have just this video is not just going to be arrows flying back and forth I'm probably going to edit out most of it but i just wanted to show you this first bit just got to show you what this what this quest is really like and it's just kobolds and yes it is the kobolds from the caves that we're eventually going to have to go into anyway just give me a helper so she can end it please help her no, just on guard. You guys are fine. There are only two kobolds left. Come on. Give me my guy. Thank you. What? What? Oh, this. God. <laughs> I just want this quest to end. There are two more ways we gotta fight. All right, we got them. Great. No, I don't want to continue that. Exit. No. Hear war cries and the clang of metal in front of you. And you see a large group of kobolds engaged in melee with some nomads. Combat. There's no parlay here. Alright. We don't have far to go for this. I do usually like to move right to this building. Just so they can be right up against us. Makes it go a little quicker. Because really, all you're doing is just fighting kobolds. Although the nomads are a little bit more effective with their longbows than they are with uh, melee attacks. Um, you're at a little bit of a disadvantage there. Or you're taking your extra help and putting it at a slight disadvantage. But you really don't need them. As a matter of fact, I'd rather not have them. It just makes the fight ten times longer. Crack a lacka. I can just skip this and they'll just give me a summary of the damage done. <laughs> if any. Kobolds have a really hard time hitting us. Oh, okay, there we go. Right on cue. See what I mean? Right on cue. Trying to do this quest with a party of all clerics is so annoying because clerics can't sweep. That's a fighter-only mechanic. So you're just going to be sitting there with a really high Thaco, just trying to take out kobolds one by one. End up casting a lot of hold person. 
which you can do when you have a party of like four or five clerics. All right, the cobalts are beginning to surrender. Sweep. Yes. Yes. There's one more cobalt. Oh, come on. Okay, he surrendered. All right, that's that wave. Now we have one more wave, mercifully. And we're going to do it here. Where does it happen? Oh. You hear war cries and the clang of metal to your left. You spin to face the sound. You see a huge group of kobolds moving reluctantly forward under the curses of their leader. The headman walks up and slaps you on the back. Well done. Let's say we finish together. Finish this together. Destroy the kobolds or flee? <laughs> or destroy the kobolds. And let us do it. A battle begins. All right, peoples. This is our first casting of Fireball. Oh, yeah, I'm going to put it right there. You ready for this? Y'all ready for this? How many are down to the south? Uh, manageable. Manageable amount. Cast. Fireball. Somebody ordered a fireball. Um, right there. Yes. <laughs> Best spell in the game. Unfortunately, we can only cast one of them right now. Or else those other waves would have just been taken out far sooner. Nice. All right, that, that did a lot of work for us, which is really good. Now we sit here and we take a barrage of arrows. None of the arrows hit. So it's just the headman and two fourth level fighters for NPCs this time. I have never had a headman die. And I don't think I want to... I know what happens if he does. Uh, it's going to get a small amount of them. We'll only get the three if I cast it there. So yeah, whatever. Just anything, I'm going to speed this along. Yeah, sure, we're going to cast old person a few times. Cast another sleep. Oops. Uh... Right here. There's a side. Uh, okay. Uh, we're gonna abort the spell. Yep. Can't reach anybody. <laughs> We put them all to sleep before we could uh, finish our casting our whole person spell. That's okay though. Oh no, they hit Hassad! Stop it! I don't want to know. Oh, they're starting to surrender anyway. Alright, well, that was easy. Thanks, Fireball. <laughs> Oh, really? Oh, come on. Help her. Now I wish I hadn't put any to sleep, because then they would, they would just surrender. It'd be over. All right, just going to have to clean it up. You guys should be sweeping. What are you doing? No, like this. There we go. That's it. All done. We win. Shaman walks up to you and says, good job, aces, here is some treasure. Decent amount of experience. Uh, not gonna take that gold. Oh, two-handed sword and a wand. Okay, I'll take both of those. Nope. Oh, now please leave us to our mourning as a personal thing for our people. 
we leave. All right. And that is the, uh, I find the recently abandoned camp. That is the nomad quest. We'll go back to town eventually to collect our reward. I'm actually going to keep going west. There are a couple things we can do before we get back to town. You're surprised by a group of nomads. Parlay. Nomads greet you and exchange pleasantries. So at the end of this river here, which is the river that runs into town, you see that little black disc on the map? We're going there. Off in the distance, you see a large dragon flying through the air. As you watch, he swoops down behind a mountain and disappears. As you hike through the mountains, a large dragon flies above you, circles and swoops down, lands in front of a cave. It disappears into a cave. What will you do? Enter the cave or ignore it. We're going to enter. You enter the cave. As you're entering the cave, a magic mouth appears on one of the walls. In a booming voice, it says, Who enters the home of Diogenes? Speak now and declare your intent. We can state our name and intent, or we can leave. We're going to state our name and intent. What will you say is your reason for being here? Ask the dragon for advice. Challenge the evil leader of Old Flan. Pledge party to dragon service or offer a gift. We're going to ask the dragon for advice. The characters hear a loud flapping noise and then a warm rush of air hits their faces. Standing before you now is a great silver dragon. He says, you are wise to seek my counsel and I can help you. Far to the east, there is a large cobalt complex. There is a silver bottle of great power there that will help you on your quest. Retrieve that bottle, then return, and I will send you on another quest. After speaking, the dragon flies through an opening in the ceiling and I guess leaves. All right, ignore the cave. That's the silver dragon. So the, the cobalt complex he mentioned is the same cobalt case we eventually have to clear out. The silver bottle is an Afridi bottle. It has an Afrit, uh, Afridi in it. And it will appear if there is a vampire present. And there is a vampire in the graveyard. The boss, the boss battle of the graveyard is against a vampire. And if you have the Afridi bottle, uh, he'll be an NPC in your party for that fight. The last thing we're going to do here is... Do you see the sandy texture of the river next to the river there and the oil spilling forth from that pyramid? Pyramid is polluting the river so badly we cannot cross it. It says the river stench drives you back. There is a quest eventually that says find the source of the river's pollution and end it. And that's where it is. We're going to go into the pyramid. And we're going to do that quest now. I don't want to fight Sturgis. You found a rowboat hidden amongst the reeds. Will you take it to the pyramid? Yes. In front of a magnificent pyramid, you have found a secret door that leads into the pyramid. What will you do? Enter. Secret door is found behind you. Okay, there's no map here. It is incredibly easy to get lost. As a matter of fact, you are meant to. And it's almost impossible to find your way back out. As a matter of fact, when you... If you do get lost in the pyramid, you'll come across other parties of adventurers who see you and they're like, we're saved. And then they immediately attack you because they've gone insane because they spent so much time in the pyramid. I know the secret. I know how to get to the end of the pyramid without making any mistakes. And I will show you how to do that. First, I'm just going to rest up, save the game, and then I'll walk you through the pyramid. Okay, so we're ready to crawl the pyramid. The secret is there are invisible teleporters in the pyramid uh, that you have to sort of configure a certain way to get to the end. And the formula is really simple. The first portal you find, you walk straight through it. Every portal you find is gonna give you the opportunity to throw a, a rock through it. You wanna do that for once, every other time you find a portal. But for the first one, you walk straight through it, every other one you throw a rock first. And that's basically it. Here, let me show you what I mean. So on the right here, whoops, went too far. You see rocks scattered about the smooth flagstones. That's the prompt. As you carefully search the room, you feel a strange tingle when you get close to a bare area. Move on. As you move through the room, there is a flash and suddenly you find yourselves elsewhere. So go to the end of this hall where it uh, sort of tees, makes a T, go right, go to the east. And then keep going until you find a portal. Ignore the secret door. There's nothing there. 
Secret door is round to your right. Ignore it. Uh huh. See smooth. Uh, sorry, you see rocks scattered about the smooth flagstones. We're gonna throw a rock. You throw a rock, suddenly disappears with a flash. Move on. So we've thrown a rock, and now we're moving on. Just go to the end of this hall. There's nothing else here. It's a straight shot. At the end of it is another portal. We're gonna throw another rock, and then we're gonna move on. You throw a rock, you move it on. Throw a rock, you move it on. Throw a rock. Move on. Portal's like two spaces in front of you here. See rocks, throw a rock. Move on. Turn around. Find a door. We did it. This is where the end is. So, remember that translation wheel uh, I showed you in a previous episode? You see a sign over the door in front of you. It says, don't forget the password. This is followed by six dwarvish ruins. Uh, runes, rather. Six dwarvish runes. So they're the first and the fourth one are identical, second and the fifth identical, third and the sixth identical. So it's one word with repeating letters. If you were to translate that with the translation wheel, you quickly translate them and say it would be knock knock. And okay, and okay. Do you really mean knock knock? Yes, I mean, you do really mean knock knock. We did it. You've entered the fountain chamber. In the center of the room, a column of black foul water jets up through a clear pipe and out the roof. Another pipe running from the wall across and to your right pumps in streams of the foul liquid. All about the room are valves, gauges, petcocks, and pipes. What do you do? We're going to destroy the equipment. Sometimes you destroy it, destroy it successfully. Sometimes it explodes and deals a crap ton of damage, maybe even killing one of your party members. So let's cross our fingers. Destroy the equipment. Here, a large winding from the pipes and the black liquid is bubbling. However, not all equipment is yet destroyed. What do you do? Destroy the equipment. Okay, destroy the equipment. Okay, destroy the equipment. There's an enormous explosion. Crap. <laughs> Bits of pipe and other plumbing uh, fixtures fly in all directions. Oh, 19 points of damage. A lot of freaking damage right there. Uh, luckily, though, I'm pretty sure you can just uh, rest. <laughs> I think you can just sleep it off, right? Yeah. So that's good news. So that machine was some sort of weird alchemy contraption. Uh, there's an evil wizard who lives here who is using some strange substances to make mutants. Mutant lizard men and stuff. He's actually through that door. This is the door we came from. This is the knock-knock door. He's through there. First, though, we're going to go through this door. We've entered a pumping room. Working as slaves in this room are three lizard men with whip cuts across their backs who are shackled to the wall by long chains. Two of them are pouring barrels of the black containment, uh, contaminant rather, into a large vat. The other is working a bellows pump. They recoil in fear. Advance. Parlay. Nice. As you free them, to tell you all about what uh, Yarash is doing and how you can get help from their tribe in the swamp. Copy all they say is entry 35 of your journal, which I will read to you now. Told in halting speech. Thank you for freeing us. Yarash has been experimenting on our people, changing them in horrible ways. Every night we carry off another lizard man with his chest burst open or his head mangled. Yarash says he makes us like Sahagin. He always say that makes us stronger, better hunters, but all he make us is dead. We were not allowed to speak when Yarash was around. These marks were passed down to us and remind us of home. They represent the friend word used between lizard men of different tribes. If you meet lizard men on the outside, this word may help you. There's been carefully scratched marks into the dirt. You recognize the marks as two runes and a path symbol. And you use the translation wheel yet again to translate the word to savior, S-A-V-I-O-R. There's eventually a quest in the swamp where you have to stop the lizard men tribes from joining the enemy. If you go there and speak the word savior, uh, that's the right way to do that quest. Okay. Let's go fight Yarash. Kick his balls in. Kick. 
An ancient mage looks out from his studies. Oh, good. I need more specimens as controls. He turns to his mutated guards. Subdue them. Advance, advance, advance. Combat. Cast. Old person. Garage. I think these things are the mutant lizard men. I think they're immune to magic. Oh, crap. Stinking cloud? Alright. Okay, so they're not immune to stinking cloud. Good to know. Good to know. Um, actually, you know what? Why don't we put Crackalacko away for a minute and throw a dart? Right in Yurash's throat! Get the lizard, man. Ouch. 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 Come on, dudes. Thank you. Magic missile. Come on. Friends, thank you. A magic mytho. Ow. Wow, we're getting crap kicked out of us. <laughs> uh, magic missile. 10 damage? 5. Nuts. How's a magic missile only do five damage? Yeah, that was not the right path to take. Um. Yeah, you know what? We're gonna use our wand of magic missiles like this. Heck yeah. Ugh. Oh, those things, those things are tough. But we got them. Decent amount of experience. What do they got for money? Platinum. Eight platinum. Oh, those are some good items. The juice, you're all over that, right? Yeah, take it all. Share the platinum. This is the desk of Yarash. On it is a litter of papers. Among the papers on the desk, you find the following and slip them into your journal. Letter from the boss telling Arash to join or die. Entry 33. An official looking notice. Arash, the time has come for you to add your power to the growing legions of my followers. Come and supplicate yourself to me and I will reward you as an important officer in my magical forces. You will serve as the advisor to the cohort of soldiers to be based at Sorcerer's Island. Which is, I think, where we are right now. Resist, and you shall be crushed before my almighty power. Expect your positive reply within the week. Signed, the boss. Nonsense reply to this letter. Entry 49. Letter on clean white paper in a strong hand. To the boss, Valievo Castle, Flan. Sir, I categorically reject your demand that I submit my island and my powers to your control. I am a free man and I will remain free. No petty tyrant can order about a true mage. If you or your troops make any move towards Sorcerer's Island, I shall send an army of my unstoppable aquatic creations from uh, down the barren river and sink your precious castle. Until now, you have been beneath my notice. If you value your empire, let us keep it that way. Signed, Yarash, the Sorcerer. Okay. Message to the Buccaneers offering a bounty for a real Saugan. Which is a, another amphibious... Creature kind of like a lizard man or a bullywug, something like that. An impressive announcement. Bounty of 10,000 gold. I will pay 10,000 gold pieces for a live Sawagan. I will pay 1,000 gold pieces for a recently dead one in good condition. I need a specimen of this man-like saltwater aquatic creature for my studies. Bring your specimen to the shore of Lake Kuto and build a fire as a signal. Your specimen will be examined. If it is truly a sow again, you will end up with 10,000 gold pieces. But beware, I will know any forgeries and I will punish any attempt at deception. 
So capture a live Sawagan, bring him to the uh, Lake Kuto and walk away a rich man. That That is like the sketchiest, the sketchiest Craigslist post I've ever heard. <laughs> Light a bonfire to signal that you're there. Warning to an agent about the dangers in the mountains to the northwest, which I think is about the dragon we met. Journal entry 56. An unsent note written on sturdy parchment. An active dragon has made its home in the Dragonspine Mountains to the northwest. Keep search parties away from the area so as not to catch the dragon's attention. All right. Note to a trapper about kobolds and hobgoblins. Entry 40... A quick note on an often used piece of paper. Both kobolds and hobgoblins exist in large numbers to the east. Experiments show neither makes good breeding material. <laughs> Gross. All right. That's enough of the journal entries. There is a portal here. Yeah, so right to the... Right just to the north of where you find all the journal entries here is a portal that will take you back to the beginning of the pyramid so you can exit. However... You can see I've rested up the party and everything. Um, just did it now to save a little bit of time. If you go one square to the left of that, to the west of the portal, you find a dial that can be set to four different colors. Blue, copper, silver, and gold. It's currently set to blue. Blue is exit. Do you wish to change the setting? Yes. We're going to do copper first. And then go through the portal. As you move through the room, there is a flash, and you suddenly find yourself elsewhere. You are in a storeroom holding a vast collection of magical junk. However, hidden amidst all of this junk, you find some treasure. Nice. I think this stuff might be mostly randomized. Magic user scrolls and a morning star. Okay. Help her. Why don't you take all those? Nope. All right. Go back through the portal. And now we're going to set the dial. Currently set to copper. Yes, we're going to change it to silver. And then go back through the portal. In a different room. In a storeroom holding a vast collection of magical junk. Find some treasure. Great. Money. Items. Oh. Composite longbow. A magical composite longbow. Are you kidding me? I don't think I've ever found one in this game before. <gasps> Crazy cool. In second edition, composite longbows let you use your strength modifier for damage rather than your dexterity, which means fighters using those longbows. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. So excited. Plus one arrows. That's that's sick. I like that a lot. I'm so excited. I don't think I've ever found a magical composite longbow in this game before. The hundreds of hours I've put into this game in my life. Yes, yeah, so we're going to change the setting to gold. I don't know how we're going to find something better than that, though. Watch, it turns out to be cursed. <laughs> cursed items do exist in this game. All right, uh, let's see what we got here. Same money amounts. Hand axes don't really have... Um, much use in this game, unfortunately. All right, now we're gonna set it to blue and we're gonna get the heck out of here. Yes, blue. And that is the pyramid. We're gonna go back to town. Collect our rewards for both the pyramid and the nomads. Look, nature is returning. As you leave the Sorcerer's Pyramid behind you, you can see that the land is already beginning to recover from the alchemical pollution caused by the pyramid. Sweet. Go back. All right. Look, we can even like, dance. surprise by a group of merchants, parlay. Merchants greet you and exchange pleasantries. Look, we can, uh, group of displacer beasts, flee. Oh no. Oh no, displacer beasts. Okay, there's only two of them. But we don't we don't like that much. Well, like I said, anything in the game can be found out here. 
including a fireball. <laughs> That was not a very strong one. Oh, we dr drilled that displacer piece. Oh, that hurt. Oh, we're messing them up. We are messing them up. Oh. Cast another magic missile. The juice from downtown. Oh, couldn't quite sink it. There we go. Oh, baby. All right, let's see if we can get back to town safely. Group of lizard men. Yes. Kobolds. Good. We made it. Small boat taking you back to the civilized area. Take the small boat. All right, we're going to go to an inn. Everything is closed anyway because it is nighttime. So we're going to relearn those spells that we cast against the displacer bees. Get our stuff identified. Get the reward and then see if anybody levels up. I show you our wares. Yes, I'm so excited about this composite longbow. Can you please tell me about it? Please tell me about it. Composite longbow plus two? Holy shit. That's amazing. I can't believe this is in this game. Oh, that is so good. Oh, here, I'll show you. With our plus one shortbow, which is a set item in the game that you get every time. Our Thaco is 12 and our damage is 1d6 plus one. But with the long composite longbow, Thaco is 11, damage is 1d6 plus two. It's not that much of a difference. One more damage point, one less, uh, I guess, DC uh, to hit, but I've never seen a plus two composite longbow in this game before, and I'm just so excited about the rarity of the item. <sighs> so glad I found you. Uh, plus two, two end sword, I believe. Yep. Wanted magic missiles, great. Uh, join. Can't join plus one arrows for some reason. Uh, sell that broadsword, don't need it. Two end sword plus two is kind of cool. We'll hold on to that for now. Helper has got some magical items. Morningstar plus three. Um, trade that to cheese. Trade the scrolls to juice. Juice is going to scribe some overloaded. Another thing too, Helper's been using a short sword plus two for the, the lower Thaco rather than a plus one long sword. Mace plus two. That goes 15, damage is 1d6 plus five. What? Wrong class. Oh man. Um, let's give it a hamburger. Crosshair plus one, we can sell that. So the hand axe is probably hand. Oh, wait. Hand axe plus two. That's pretty nice. I've never seen that either, but uh, sold. We sell that here. Oh, we got to draw some of this money. Movement was only three. I might not pick that back up. <laughs> we'll see. Pushing a speed. Okay. Wand of paralyzation. Great. Armor braces, armor class four, two potion healing. I want to give the potions of healing to helper. We don't need the braces, armor class six anymore. We'll sell those. Six thousand gold. Oh yeah, drop a thousand. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna pick this back up. So stake goes thirteen damage one d eight plus four. They go twelve two d four plus six. That's a lot better. Not a lot better. It's a little bit better, but I'll take it. Sell the longsword. My helper's holding on to two of them right now. And we'll hold on to the two into sword plus two for now. 
Um, and we're going to leave a 1400 platinum back because we just don't have the, we just don't have the, um, and the, uh, available space. Actually, what's, oh yeah, the money's weighing them down. Let's move, movement went from three to six. Hopefully people can, <laughs> you leave, the shopkeeper says, excuse me, but you have left some money here. Do you want to go back and get your money? No, dude, you got it. You've been so good to us. <laughs> I just hold on to that 1400 uh, platinum pieces. Oh, wait, I gotta go back. I gotta go to town hall. I gotta get a rewards. At your entry, the council clerk begins looking through a stack of papers. Before I can offer commissions, I must see if you're due a current reward. We're due two. With the clearing of the Stoyanow Sto River, we can open up the hinterlands for trade. Here's your reward. 8,500? Oh my lord. All right, share all that. We're much relieved by the news you bring from the nomad camp. Here's your reward. Sure, we'll share that too. I must bring your attention... Uh, Bring to your attention the following concerning Valhingen Graveyard. Undead from the graveyard have grown more dangerous than all of the other forces which confront us. I've been authorized to give you an enchanted weapon. Do you accept the commission to end the graveyard menace? Do you accept? Yes. Extra 500. So, this is one of the most interesting magic items in the game. It's a two-handed sword that's plus one against all monsters. Unless that monster is undead, in which case it's plus three. Kind of cool. That's kind of cool. These are all cleric scrolls of restoration. We're not going to take them. Uh, only because I'm actually going to close the game and reload it. If any of our party members take uh, level drain damage. So in second edition, creatures such as whites, specters, and vampires when uh it hits you and drain you of levels when a white hits you they drain you one level specters drain you one two levels two levels and vampires also drain you two levels levels as in like you were a level six fighter now you're level four and the reason we could cast these restoration spells uh and bring them back to level six but any experience that you had gained t from level six towards level seven is gone forever. And I just don't want that. The reason why we have a small party is to level up faster and experience is everything to me in this playthrough, at least. So I'm going to cheat. But hey, I mean, if things can hit you and drain levels, that's like stealing progress of the game away from you. So who's really cheating? <laughs> In a matter of commission, I can offer the following. Council's offering a reward for books, maps, tomes, etc., which provide useful information about Flan before the fall. The reward is tied to the value of the information. A large tribe of kobolds is being recruited by the enemy. Make sure they don't join the enemy forces. A tribe of lizard men is preparing to join the enemy. Prevent this. These are all the commissions currently available. So, here are all the things we have. Mendor's Library, which is collecting all the tomes and maps and everything. We have the Textile House which is recovering Lord Cadorna's family treasure. Um, we have stopped the lizard men from joining the, um, the forces. We have the cobalt caves uh, and the graveyard. That's five things we can do right now of a possible seven before we get to like the castle gate and the castle itself. So we're nearing the end game here of Pool of Radiance. Train only magic users here. Do you want to train? Oh, yes, I do. Nope. Yes, helpers of level four magic user, you're going to learn knock like everyone else. And I think you're actually going to prepare it. I guess you have to prepare it maybe to get into the library. We'll see. Uh, the juice train. Yes, level six, baby. You're going to learn lightning bolt for sure. Heck yeah. Jeez, can you? Train only clerics here, do you train? Yes, level six cleric. Ship it. All right, fighters next. Yes, I want to train fighters. Train. Yes, level five fighter. Train. Dang it. Not enough experience. Okay. Pretty good, though. 
Hit points only jumped up too. That's lame. Thieves helper. Yes, level five thief. Well, that was successful. Let's memorize some spells. I'll show you how I'm going to distribute them. We're going to scribe some scrolls as well. Uh, yes. Juice, why don't you do it this time? Helper is going to learn another magic missile and knock. Cheese. Uh, I guess one more cure disease. The juice. Uh, one more fireball. Uh, scribe. Protected from evil. Detect invisibility. Reduce. Blink. Burning hands. Mirror image. Enlarge. Next. Oh, dispel magic. Yes. Good spell. Yep, we're going to scribe them. Rest it up. Uh, we have other magic user scrolls that I want Juice to see if um, they are scribable. So she's the one who's going to be using them ultimately. We pretty much ha have Hamburger and Helper as magic users to cast Fireball in the Cobalt case. <laughs> That's basically the reason why they are uh, magic users themselves. All right, so the juice, uh, magic, scribe. I think we know all these spells already. Oh, slow and rave enfeeblement, haste, old person, great. Friends, sure. No one told you life was going to be this way. Scribe and scrolls, you're broke. Your love lies, BOA. By the gateway to the unsettled areas, the city watch eyes you suspiciously. I think we're going to try and see if we can do the library before we adjourn for this episode. Library is one of my favorites, personally. Uh, but it's kind of a slow burn, so it'll be like a short part of this episode. So I think, I think we can sneak it in there. Uh, to get there, we're going to go through the slums, and then to the west block, Kuto's Well, and then to the south. Immediately to the south of Kuto's Well is the library. So we're going to trek there now. Okay, here we are. There is the uh, the exterior of the library. Knock. We got in. Sweet. You see an empty room. The only feature is a series of frescoes on the walls of learned men and the heavenly patrons of art and learning. Get a feeling of peace. So the reason why we're here is twofold. One is to take back this block of flan for the council. The other specifically to look for books, maps, tomes, etc. that has information about the city before the monster has kind of overran it. And to find those pieces, you have to literally sit there in the game and hit that look button. There's actually like, whoops, there's actually like right behind me on the bottom. Uh, a bunch of times until you find the stuff. <laughs> And the reason why this is a personal favorite of mine is because investigatory tabletop role-playing is my favorite part of role-playing. Solving mysteries, finding clues, piecing them together, interrogating NPCs, that sort of thing. Combat, a very close second. I love mystery solving and searching for clues and stuff, which is why I love this. It's not a super heavy combat, um, super heavy combat quest um but there is combat so i will be sure to cut out all the dead space when i'm looking um and just show you what you can find these are the library stacks old and moldering books are stored on shelves a sign over the entrance reads history i believe there are there are a few different there are four different sections one of the sections has nothing to find one of them has a basilisk. One of them has five items you can find. The other one, I think, has eight. I think history is the one that has eight. So I'm just going to look around. Oops. As you search the room, I find various books contain so much myth, you don't find anything useful. I find various books are so full of... Yeah. So you can walk around with the search button on, or you can just hit the L button for look, which is what I'm going to do until I find something, and I'll show you. Aha! You find the Grand Historian's records of the arts of war. 
In it, you find a useful passage which you copy into your journal as entry 21, which I will read for you now. A crumbling old book, one of a massive series. Quote, At this time, they're ruling the Twisted Ones, capitalized, Twisted Ones, was a powerful general named Tyran Thraxus. He strode before his armies, cloaked in flame, and led the riders out of the waste. At his hand, the kingdom of Barza was conquered. Turning south, he led his army to conquer the Horeb and the Vein. Tyrant Thraxus was a cruel man and leveled all that he had taken, murdering the princes of these lands. But the flame that surrounded him consumed him, destroyed his body. Freed of its shell, it flew among the men of his army, lighting on each and claiming it. It was then when Baron shot, imprisoned Tyrant Thraxus in a vial of water, which shone like the light of day. This he sank in the watery depths of Lake Longreach, defeating the armies Tyrant Thraxus had raised. <laughs> wow. Tyrant Thraxus is the bad guy of the campaign. He is the BBEG. He's the boss. And the reason why that passage stood out to the party was because they are seeing a pattern now. This is not the first time we've heard Tyrant Thraxus' name. Baron Martinez is the first one to utter it. Uh, we also saw it written in um, some letters about uh, Tyrant Thraxus being maybe a dragon or a man who can turn into a dragon. His name keeps popping up. He is the bad guy. Let's keep looking. Oh, yes, we take that. Oh, the very next look. You find Lex Geographica, an atlas drawn by Tomaris. It has a map of Flan, which, through, which though old, still could be useful. It becomes entry 37 in your journal. Let me tell you what that says. A massive atlas drawn by the great mathematician Tomaris. These maps are in the manual. I've used the one of Flan before, the one with all the blocks. Sweet. Let's keep looking. Do you take it? Yes. You find the history of the North. It is mostly written to please a royal line. However, there is an interesting passage which you copy into your journal as entry number eight. A rugged popular account of the Northern lands. Ten days ride north of the Varm is a barren and dead country called the Lewi, land in pain or land of cause pain. Further to the south, this place is known as the tortured land. It is said to be an evil place, shunned by the riders. They speak little of this land, but yearly during Shez, they make a trip into its heart. There they go to praise the spirit of a glowing spring. This they have done for ages, and so shall they do for years to come. A pool of radiance. There are several pools of radiance. Notice how this game is not called the pool of radiance. It's just called pool of radiance. Significance, TBD. I could tell you now, but it's really not that big a reveal. <laughs> Let's just keep going, shall we? Do you take it? Oh, yeah. So as I'm looking here, I am kind of moving around the room. I don't think it actually makes a difference where you are. Hitting the look button or searching kind of searches an entire region or the entire area you're in, the, the whole room, not just the square. Uh, so we found three things in the history section. It could be that this is it, but there are three items in the history section, and then there are eight in the philosophy section, I think. Or one of them, one of them doesn't have any books. You can sit there searching and searching, but there's nothing there. Yeah, I think it's just three. Hmm. Maybe we'll come back to this. I think the history section only has three items, which is interesting. Uh, these are the library stacks. Old and moldering books are stored on shelves. The sign over the entrance reads philosophy. And where's the natural philosophy theories of art is very boring. I'm going to search this for a little while. Could be that this is the section that doesn't have anything to find. Oh, never mind. You find a book entitled Meditations. You take it? Yes, I do. All right, so this is the one that has eight items to find in it. That's number one. Number two, you find Fire Deatha's Discourses on Power. Among all the dry text, you find an interesting passage, which you copy into your journal as entry seven, which I'll read to you now. A tightly bound scroll, seemingly immune to the ravages of time. 
Fountains and pools hold great power that can only be reached by performing proper ceremonies. Most sure of these is immersion. For in this way, the bather surrenders himself to the spirit of the water. That spirit or some portion of it enters into the bather, whereby he gains great powers. Woe to the weak-willed whose spirits are sure to be consumed by spirits that put even the strong at great risk. Yorax holds that the falls of Ixa are greatest of these. Morden writes that the pool of radiance is greater still. Later in the book. Places of magical power are not necessarily tied to one physical location. Power often moves from plane to plane along the path of least resistance. The termination of the path determines the place's location on this plane. Volatile upheavals between the planes may lead to a change in the path of least resistance. This can change where the path terminates on this plane, thus moving the place of power. It goes on, but that's basically saying that the pool of radiance, or any given pool of radiance, can move, changes. It can disappear from the material plane, go to another one, come back, and the material plane somewhere else. It continues. Some who wield strong supernatural forces can bend the path like an engineer damming a river. When the path is bent, it can terminate in a new location, moving the place of power on this plane. If the supernatural force that bent the path is removed, the path will snap back to its original form and the place of power will return to its original location. Such disruption can have violent and unpredictable results. Thus, interplanar upheavals and directed supernatural forces may hold the answer to the seemingly ever-changing location of places of power, such as the Pool of Radiance. Who do you think Tyrant Thraxis is? He's a man who can turn into a dragon, or a dragon. Where is he? How does he conquer all these lands in, in one era and pop up in another? Is he wielding supernatural forces that can bend or change the path of least resistance? What kind of being can do that? Dragons, maybe. Maybe something more sinister. God, I love this game. Do you take it? Hell yeah. Look. You find a book entitled The Harmony of the Rock. Do you take it? Hell yeah. That's number three. I think we have five more things to find. I remember the Chronicles of Aram being one. Let's see where the Chronicles of Aram might be. Oh, you find a book entitled Strom's Discussions of Poetics. You take it? Yes. Halfway there. Mm-hmm. Number five. You find Ergun's description of darkness. This is an account of his imprisonment in the lower realms. There's a passage of interest which you copy as entry 19 in your journal. This is kind of like Dante's Inferno a little bit, if I recall correctly. But let me read this out to you now. A black bound tome written in a strange, halting hand. Ellipses. And settled foremost in the hall of minor courtiers were the lesser powers. Marum of the Great Spear. Hosk, voice of Hargut, Tyran Thraxus, the flamed one, Borum of the Lake of Boiling Mud, and Kamnod the Unseen. These two fell down and became servants of the great lord Bane. Bane is a very powerful, evil aligned god in Dungeons and Dragons. Tyran Thraxus is one of his followers, according to Urgand. So is Tyran Thraxus a dragon? Is he a man? He's neither. He's something infernal. Perhaps when that earlier passage saying that he was lighting upon his own army, he was possessing them. Tyranthraxus is really powerful. And the things he possesses are power, powerful still. Not going to be an easy task taking him down. Let's keep looking here. We have three more things to find. Including the Chronicles of Aram, which for some reason is the one I remember most. Yes, we're going to take this for sure. <laughs> there she blows. You find a book entitled Chronicles of Aram. You take it? Yes. Two more things to find. Two more things to find. I believe. I'm pretty sure that I have found eight things in here before.
Ah, uh -huh. you find a book entitled Discourse on the Nature of Writing. Do you take it? Yes, I do. The reason why I know such books are here and this many are there um, is because every time or the first few times I did this quest, I thought there was, okay, there, I remember there were, there were four books here and then I would find one I don't remember and then realize there were five. Or then the next time I played it, I don't remember finding this book before. Because you don't find them in the same order every time you play. Uh, and this particular playthrough, the way we found things is really kind of pieced together the story wonderfully. It's almost like I wish they put them in that exact order. Uh, because the, the journal entries that I read aloud to you really are telling a narrative in a certain chronology that's really compelling. But again, I think you find them randomly. Not randomly. There are set pieces in here, but you know what I mean. Find them in a random order. All right, one more book. Where are you? I'm pretty sure there's an eighth book in this room. Hmm. Starting to think that maybe it's just seven. Wow, maybe it is just seven. I could have sworn there was an eighth book. Could be wrong. We found five in the history section. And seven here. Including the Chronicles of Aram. I don't actually know who Aram was in the Forgotten Realms lore. Um, I don't know why that's the one I always remember. There's no journal entry from it. It's just, I don't know. Yeah, maybe it's just seven. Why did I think it was eight? Unless I miscounted, I'm just wasting time. Wait, did I miscount? Okay. Here's the map. We're going to go across. Here's the... Uh, main entrance where that was uh we went this is the history section there's not another thing here is there i don't think so um and then here's the super science supernatural section where we found seven on seven things here five things here there's nothing in that bottom left one here i don't believe these are the library stacks. Old and moldering books are stored on shelves. A sign over the entrance reads mathematics. Do you search the room? Nothing useful. Pretty sure there's nothing here. Pretty sure. What we're going to do is I'm actually just going to make sure really quickly um, that there isn't anything here. Uh, but then the next time... Here's what I'm going to do. I want to make sure that there actually is nothing here. But I won't waste your time with it. I'll let you know if I find anything. Yeah, okay, there's nothing here. All right, let's fight a basilisk. Ho! Oh. Sign over the entrance reads rhetoric. Oh, crap. I see a dull brown reptilian monster. It doesn't seem aware of you. Combat. It's not friendly. So the thing about basilisks is they have a flesh to stone gaze. So they can look at you with their eyeballs and turn you to stone. You turn gets turned to stone in this game, you die. Uh, you have to go to a temple to get a stone to flesh spell cast at you, on you. Okay, he's nauseated. Great. Didn't get a, ch a chance to uh, use his thing. Didn't even get a turn. Ooh! The juice. Take that cloak. Take the potion. Oh, overloaded. Okay. Helper. You take everything. Uh, that's... The cleric scroll we can use to turn somebody back. The restoration scroll. Um, we don't need it. And there's nothing to search for here. I believe we've gotten all but one book. I'm not talking about what I thought was the... Uh, um, eighth book. There's one more book to find. It is probably the most important one. It, or it definitely is the most important one. Down here, though. Pick. Come on. Uh, do not go through this door. There's a garden out there with nothing in it, but poisonous things that poison you and kill you. So, uh, no. Enter a hall, which is filled with rows of writing tables and high stools, rotted mounds of parchment, litter the floor. 
In the trash, you find a box which contains gold foil. Do you take it? Ignore these. Zero experience. Three sheep of golds. They're not worth anything. You can sell them for zero. So just ignore them. They're in each one of these hallways, I think. No, I don't take it. No, I don't. Here, there's a crazy guy. You find a fighter with battered armor and wild eyes cowering in the corner. Yay, mercy, mercy, he cries, and then as suddenly, die, die, you slime from the pit. And a parlay. Nice. The man screams while frothing out the mouth. The big one, the evil one in the castle of flowers. He is coming. It is coming. Castle of flowers, that flower maze I was talking about in a previous episode. The big one, Tyrant Thraxus. You see the man is quite mad. Do you take pity and invite him to go with you? No. No. He goes nuts and attacks you and stuff like that. Uh, we're going to ignore him. Watching you warily, he inches away. When he's out of, the sword, out of sword's reach, he scrambles to his feet and flees the room. The was once a study is now a shattered ruin. Barry to made all the trash. You see a book. Do you take it? This is the book I was talking about. This is the Manual of Bodily Health. It takes 30 days to read it and to do its exercises and stuff, but then it increases your constitution by one. Super important. If, 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 especially if you maxed out your characters, like I have, and you have a dwarf in your party. You see how everything is 18? 18 is usually the most you can go as a player character. Elves get plus one to dexterity naturally. So they get to go to 19. Dwarves get plus one to constitution naturally, so they get to go to 19. Reading the Manual of Bodily Health as a dwarf will bump your constitution to 20. When your constitution is 20 in this game, I don't know if this is a second edition thing, but you can naturally heal hit points after a certain amount of time. Which is nuts. Which is really helpful. Huge, hugely good mechanic. Hugely good. <laughs> That's just nuts. I mean, it's a hugely impactful thing to have a PC who can just heal themselves after a certain amount of time. I mean, they don't heal all their hit points, but as you're just walking, you'll see a little prompt at the bottom of the screen say, so and so heals for X amount of hit points. And you're like, whoa, it's because their constitution's 20. Pretty great. We're going to go through this door now. Oh, yeah. Pick. Ash. See a ruined room. You see a jar in the floorboards. Take it? Yeah. Oh, potions. Sweet. Helpful. Nothing else in this room, right? There's one more fight. We, don't, we haven't gone through this door. Entered a storeroom full of supplies. Cobalts, they stand arms raised and surrender. They plead for mercy. One of the cobalts says, we parlayed. One of the cobalts says, if you spare our lives, we will tell you all we know about this area. You spare them? Yes. Describe the surrounding area to you. You listen carefully. Question them, and from this, sketch a map into your journal, calling it Entry 10. i take a look at this and tell you what it's a map of. A crude map scratched onto an old piece of parchment. It's a... It's a drawing of part of the textile house. Little X's for bad things. It's pretty funny. Bad things. Oh, cobalts. Yeah, we let them go. Any treasure in here? I don't think so. I don't remember what the heck cobalts are supposed to be doing here. But they were there. All right. Um. That's it. So the last fight is against the spirit of the librarian who is now a specter let's do it specter suddenly appears before you thief i defended these books in life and i will defend them in death oh that uh, hits us drains us two levels don't want that get him all right we defeated the specter 
You need magical items to hit a specter. I think you need plus two or better items to even do damage to a specter. Plus one might be able to hit them. I don't actually recall. But that is the library. We did it. We're going to go back to town. And uh, we're going to get some rewards. See if anybody can level up. And then probably... I don't know. We'll go somewhere else from there. Okay, we made it back to town. Let's get a reward. Let's get some stuff identified. Let's get some stuff leveled up, baby. At your entry, the council clerk begins looking through a stack of papers. Before I can offer any commissions, I must see if you do a current reward. There's a reward for clearing the library. Here it is. Uh, we'll take the platinum. 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 You find these discourses valuable. Here is your reward. So now we're getting rewards for um, the tomes and books we found. Council will be amused by these descriptions. Here uh, is your reward. It's not saying exactly which ones they are, but these maps should help us to locate several legendary buildings. Here is your reward. Pretty modest stuff, but the platinum is nice. These histories contain much useful information. Nice. The records provide insights into much that was puzzling. Here is your reward. Uh, cool. Cool. This material is of small value. <laughs> Here is your reward. I don't remember what that was. One gold. Okay, great. Leave that. On a matter of commission, I can offer the following. Large tribe of kobolds. Tribe of lizardmen. Heir to the house of Bivet must be rescued. We will, we will pay generously for a safe return. Yeah. Whoops. I think I just went the wrong way. Okay. Nope. Yeah, that one's out in the wilderness. We'll do that one next time for sure. Magic users, yes. Yeah, level five for hamburger. Oh yeah, fireball. Oh yeah, fireball. I think the juice has maxed out levels. However, getting another person casting fireball. Heck yeah. Let's identify some of the stuff. Let's see what we got. Okay, the manual of bodily health. Potion extra healing. Potion of extra healing. Potion of extra healing. Sweet. I'm gonna give these to our healer. Cheese. And actually, hamburger will hold on to one of them. Helper. Uh potion. Giant strength. That's pretty cool. Potion of healing. Cloak of displacement. Pretty Q. Pretty Q. Helper's going to hold on to the potion of giant strength. Since her strength is only 16. Uh, give the potion of healing to Hamburger. And we're going to give the cloak of displacement to the juice, I think. But anybody can wear it. Oh yeah, get another magic missile. Memorize that fireball, baby. Doing it up. All right, thank you so much for watching this episode of Kelvin's Coin. My name is Ross. This is Pool of Radiance. Just have a few more quests to complete. Uh, next time, we're definitely going to do the Lizardman Tribe, house uh, rescuing the heir to the House of Bivent, and the Textile House. So uh, join us next time. It should be pretty exciting. Uh, some of my favorite quests coming up, actually. So uh, looking forward to it. See you then. Thanks again. Bye now.